Hello, I'm Dr. James Alderman, Director of Interventional Cardiology at Metro West Medical Center. Interventional cardiology uh, is the therapeutic use of cardiac catheterization uh, procedures, primarily to treat coronary artery disease, the most common cause of death in this country. Coronary disease uh, occurs when there is development of plaque cholesterol deposits in the coronary arteries, the vessels that feed blood to the heart muscle. And there are three treatments for coronary disease, medications, coronary bypass surgery, and angioplasty. Angioplasty is the use of catheter-based technology to open up uh, the blockages, the plaques in one's coronary arteries. Emergency angioplasty or primary angioplasty is now the treatment of choice for a patient presenting with an acute heart attack, which is when one of those plaques disrupts and blocks off a vessel completely. Elective angioplasty is when we use our technologies to open up uh, one or more uh, discrete blockages in one's coronary arteries. Today I'll be performing an elective angioplasty. So let's get started. is at risk for developing coronary artery disease, blockages in her coronary arteries, because of her risk factors of high blood pressure, cholesterol, uh, abnormalities, diabetes. And um, fortunately, despite those risk factors, she only has one blockage, not multiple. So we're just using an instrument here under fluoroscopy to see if we can find the perfect spot. to enter. Okay, going on up. So, if you can see on the screen here, this is a wire that has gone up the aorta and down into the ascending aorta. Mm -hmm. And over that wire, we've placed a guiding catheter through this catheter that will place our angioplasty equipment. And now, looking up at the screen, I'm filling the catheter with contrast. So we're moving the camera in different directions here to take get different angulated views of this coronary artery and it's narrowing. So an ACT is an activated clotting time. An activated clotting time that measures the amount of our anticoagulation we anticoagulate, fully anticoagulate our patients during the procedure so there's no clotting. She's also received aspirin and Plavix, <clears throat> which are pills that act to inhibit platelet function. So we will use a bare metal stent okay. as opposed to a drug eluding stent, a, a um, medication coated stent. Although the medication coated stent has the advantage of a much lower chance of re-narrowing from over exuberant scar tissue response, it does require a much longer period, more than a year, at least a year, of being on both aspirin and Plavix. nitroglycerin going right down the coronary, right down into the left anterior descending artery, and it expands that vessel. 
relaxes the muscular lining of the muscle. In this situation, the artery involved, the left anterior descending artery, is one that is more prevalent, more prone to develop renarrowing. The earlier in the vessel, the closer to the beginning of the vessel, the higher the chance of renarrowing. And this is in the first third of the vessel, but not extremely close to the origin. It's also a big vessel in diameter and a very short narrowing. So the chance of a renarrowing is relatively low. Increasing the risks are the fact that it is the left anterior descending artery and the fact that uh, this patient has diabetes and does have some mild kidney disease. So Angela is holding the wire as I place this catheter into the body. At the end of this catheter is a balloon that is deflated at the current time. The other end is attached to an indeflator which can uh, inflate the balloon with contrast. Perfect. Okay, go ahead and inflate to eight atmospheres. Going up. Eight atmospheres and down. Down from eight. Coming out. Coming out with the balloon. This end is the inflation port. This end, this long tube, is this balloon. And actually, could you just hook it up again for a sec? And I'll inflate it. Go ahead and you can see, there it is, with the balloon inflated. So now we're going to place a stent, which is a stainless steel, most of the time, sometimes cobalt, chromium, metal coil that comes crimped onto the end of a balloon and can be passed down into the vessel across the narrowing just like we did with that balloon catheter. Then we inflate the balloon, which expands the stent and buttresses the stent up against the walls of that artery. Then we deflate the balloon and the stent stays there, keeping that vessel expanded. Right there. Gonna advance the catheter, okay. I'm gonna see this for a sec. That looks good. Okay, little test. Oh, perfect. I'm gonna go for it a little bit. Now set, put that on. Excellent. Go ahead and inflate. Going up. The balloon is now being inflated. Excellent. And down. Down from eight. That was eight ounces. Go to 14 ounces. Going up. Going up again to a higher pressure this time. That's good. Good. And down. Down from 14. Excellent. Okay, coming out with the. Coming out with the stent balloon. Okay, we'll take the, nitro. take the nitro sign when you're ready. Fantastic, we are all done. 
Well, today's procedure went very well. Thank you for joining us. And if you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call. Thank you.